Whilst the debate on a possible UK exit from the EU is reaching fever pitch, the ECFR 2015 foreign policy scorecard shows that at a working level, British diplomats have continued to engage constructively. At a recent lunchtime event at our London offices, we held a discussion, the incurable European, the UK and Europe's foreign policy, where experts took a look at the results from our scorecard research. The UK remains a very active player um, in terms of European policy making. That's not only in terms of inv investing diplomatic time in building coalitions, uh, it's also in terms of the leadership role which the UK plays on aid questions, um, being willing to invest, uh, for example, in, um, in airstrikes um, uh, to try to halt the advance of the Islamic State. These are not um, necessarily only areas which form part of a collective European policy, but they play a role in moving European policy forward. And there are also areas where the UK has shown in 2014 that it's very willing to form part of the European cooperation on questions like Russia sanctions, which were not without cost to the UK uh, in terms of the impact on the city, um, on uh, TTIP negotiations, which, which again is, is, is part of a very big EU-led process. Um, and, and, and in these areas, the UK does appear to be firmly at the, at, the, at the heart of what's going on in the EU. The big story in the EU, of course, was Ukraine. Um, I don't think that there was any substitute for Angela Merkel's leadership um, and she brings to it uh, actually a knowledge of the issues and a knowledge of Mr Putin uh, that nobody else in the European Union can match. Uh, so she was the right person to lead. But I think the style in which Germany did it, uh, the rather collaborative way in which they've led not just on this issue but on other things. Um, is an example of how others should lead. I'd like to see the UK do the same. There were also areas where the UK was accused of not taking enough action, such as the Ukraine crisis. Well, um, uh, if you mean um, if you mean being tough with Russia, um, uh, yes, actually, I think the UK has stepped up, uh, and I think that we need to be careful not to relax too quickly. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the campaign that Russia is pursuing in Ukraine uh, seems to me to be, I don't know, um, uh, entirely destructive. Um, and I don't think that that's the way we want anybody in this area to behave. Uh, so I think we should be extremely cautious about relaxing our grip on, on what's happening in Ukraine. There's always opportunities to get stuck in and, and try and make sure that we are shaping policy in Europe and, uh, and, and making sure that Europe is thinking not just about the crisis of the moment, uh, but also the crises that might be coming up. And the, uh, the rewriting of a security strategy in 2015, I think, is a good opportunity for the External Action Service and Federica Mogherini to set out that agenda. And I think that's something that we will certainly want to get closely involved in. This year provides the setting for new challenges and hurdles to jump. We've had warning shots um, put out um, just last month uh, by the Labour leadership arguing that um, uh, on, on a visit to Paris, Douglas Alexander was um, arguing that UK diplomats um, are losing influence, that more needs to be invested in terms of making the UK's voice heard. Um, but our sense is that, that so far, so good. So far, um, uh, the, the, the UK is, is, is holding its game, is defending, defending its priorities and is an important shaper within European policy circles. And certainly, um, so far too, other member states, um, uh, notably Germany, remain behind, uh, remain committed to keeping the UK within the EU circle. You can find a full audio recording of the event, The Incurable European, the UK and Europe's foreign policy, and information on upcoming events on our website at ecfr.eu slash events, and more information on our scorecard at ecfr.eu slash scorecard slash 2015.